All sorts of strange things periodically occur in the world, for which no reasonable explanation has yet been found. And quite often such events are accompanied by unusual things that have become evidence of mystical phenomena. So, five things that make you believe in the paranormal. At about 8 o'clock on the evening of January 29th, 1986, something strange happened in the Primorsky town of Dalnogorsk. A luminous object, about 2 meters in diameter, crashed into the hump known as Height 611, moving at a tremendous speed. The top of the hill can be seen almost all over the city. So the flight and crash of the UFO was observed by many local residents. The luminous ball crashed into the limestone rock. And after two bright flashes on the top of the hill began to ignite, similar to the flames of an electric welder, which lasted about an hour. Because of the heavy snowfall, it was very difficult to get to the hill. And the first people did not get there until three days later. When the first expedition reached the explosion point, they found fragments of rock and melted fragments of something else lying scattered all over the rocks. Both the rock debris and the bare rock, as well as the suspected fragments of the exploded body, showed clear signs of the effects of very high temperatures. But it wasn't all that simple. There was certainly an explosion. Pieces of rock broke away from the rock, but they did not, as one would expect, spread out for tens or hundreds of meters, but lay nearby in several compact patches. At the same time, many bushes and trees that grew on top did not feel the explosion at all, although just a few centimeters from them an unknown force tore and floated the rocks. And with all the other oddities, this phenomenon left so many questions that no sane explanation could be found. But the most interesting thing is that the researchers found strange artifacts on the top. For example, melted balls with holes, composed of the most bizarre combinations of metals. Or, for example, particles of melted carbon in a glass-like state, which is formed at temperatures of at least 3,500 degrees Celsius. And much more. And the most surprising were the black glass. Similar formations with numerous holes, called meshes. These formations surprised specialists most of all. Their samples, for example, did not dissolve in the strongest acids. At the same time, the meshes had so many strange, unexplainable properties that the specialists of the Institute of Terrestrial Magnetism who studied them concluded that such technology is impossible with the current level of technological development. And they added that it was undoubtedly a sign of high technology and not a specimen of natural or terrestrial origin. And the mystery of the events of Altitude 611 is still unsolved. Betty and Barney Hill's abduction was one of the first documented alien abductions. Best of all, their case is still one of the most controversial and, oddly enough, convincing. Here is a rough chronology of events. On September 20, 1960, the Hillis were returning by car from a vacation. They had visited Niagara Falls and were driving to their home in New Hampshire late that evening. Suddenly, they suddenly saw a strange object in the sky that hovered above the ground. On a deserted highway, they were the only witnesses to the phenomenon, and the curious Barney stopped the car, pulled out his binoculars, and tried to see anything. But when they realized that a huge, dirty object was moving at a tremendous speed toward their car, they panicked and tried to get away from the UFO. Both spouses remembered an unusual beep, after which they suddenly found themselves 35 miles further down the road. And the clock showed that they had traveled those 35 miles in two hours. How could they simultaneously forget what had happened to them during that 35 miles and two hours of travel? And where that strange glowing object had gone was a mystery to them. Subsequently, under the influence of hypnosis, Hill forced them to recount that they had been taken to the spaceship, experimented on, erased their memories, and transported back to Earth. It was as if nothing had happened. And even though the local airbase recorded unidentified objects in the sky, roughly where Hill allegedly abducted the UFO, the story still seemed too dubious. It would seem to be a perfectly typical story of people trying to get cheap fame. 
If it were not for one interesting and important detail, on Betty's dress were found strange stains, as if it was covered with some kind of pink powder. Betty willingly shared fragments of her dress with the stains, with anyone who wanted to conduct research and chemical analysis of the powder. And the amazing thing was that so far no one had been able to determine the composition of the powder or give any theory as to the origin of the stains. And the legendary dress is still preserved at the University of New Hampshire. And the events of the following story became the basis for the horror movie The Curse of Annabelle. And while the real story is very different from the film's final script, it is certainly no less frightening. It all began in 1970. Donna, a medical school student who changed her name and surname after this story, was celebrating another birthday. Her mother decided to give her daughter a large, vintage and rag doll she had bought at a local thrift store. The doll took its place in the apartment on Donna's bed, which she was renting with her friend Angie, and after a few days, the girls noticed the oddity. Every morning I sat the doll down on the bed. Arms at the seams, legs outstretched, Donna told me. When we'd come home in the evening, we'd find that her limbs looked like someone had been tugging at them. For example, her legs were crossed and her arms were folded in her lap. But while in the early days the doll was just sitting on Donna's bed, at some point the girls began to find her in various places around the house. One night we came back and found the doll on the chair by the front door. Another time the doll appeared on the couch, even though we had left it in the room behind a closed door before. And the girls came to the most logical conclusion that an unknown guest with a strange sense of humor was visiting their apartment during their absence. The girls conducted an experiment and during their next walks they sealed the windows and doors so that if the guest appeared he would leave traces. Only what was the surprise of the girls when the strangeness repeated itself. But none of the traps worked. But the real scare for the girls came when Donna discovered drops of blood on the doll's hand. Understandably, the police couldn't help them, so the girls turned to a medium for help. And this is what they were able to find out. A girl, seven-year-old Annabel Higgins, had died here. She had lived nearby long before this building was built. And by moving the doll, the girl's spirit was giving a sign, asking for help. She wanted to inhabit the doll and the girls, believing that the spirit only wanted communication during a seance, allowed her to do so. But then the real devilry began. When their boyfriend came to visit the girls, there was a noise from Donna's room, as if someone had entered the room. When the noise stopped and the boys looked behind the door, the room was empty and there was an Annabelle doll lying on the floor. And then their buddy screamed and grabbed his chest. Bloodstains appeared on his shirt in many places. The girls took him into the living room, and when they unbuttoned his shirt, there were scratches on his chest that looked like claw marks. That same day, the girls left the apartment and contacted America's most famous paranormal experts and the Warren family. The psychics discovered that what had taken up residence in the girls' apartment was not a spirit, but some evil entity that had taken advantage of the girls' trust and had adjusted to Annabelle's spirit image. The Warren family performed an exorcism, after which, fortunately, no paranormal phenomena occurred. And the doll, which continued to pose a danger, Donna happily gave to the Warren family. And the following artifact, according to numerous witnesses, is considered one of the rare instruments with which a successful rite of exorcism was carried out. I think many of you have seen the famous horror movie The Exorcist, but not many know that in fact, the story told in the movie is based on a real case of exorcism, which happened to a 14-year-old teenager Holland from Maryland. This incident occurred 25 years before the shooting of the film in 49. To Roland's misfortune, his own aunt began to get carried away with occasional seances and often took her nephew with her. And at some point the Doe family, the last name, of course, changed, periodically began to hear strange sounds in the house, the nature of which could not be clarified. Then things started falling off tables and cabinets in the house. And at some point, Roland's parents began to find strange scratches on the walls, as if some animal had left them. The Doe family turned to the local priest for help, and he spent the night in their home and made a scary guess. In the house settled a certain entity. 
and it inhabited the little Roland, who, however, by then behaved very strangely. The treatment in the hospital did not help, and the boy's condition got worse and worse. He was gradually turning into a furious, embittered creature in whom it was difficult to recognize the formerly quiet child. Father William Browder was hastily summoned from his ward and instructed to perform an exorcism. Everything took place in the same room. A cross was hung over the boy's bed, and Father Baldwin began the rite. The rites were performed a total of more than 30 times over the course of several weeks. And the most amazing thing is that after the ritual, the boy not only came back to normal, but according to the priests who watched him for the next half century, he lived a full life. This case is considered the real and most importantly, the most successful act of exorcism in the 20th century. For the past 30 years, locals have been finding strange artifacts on the beaches of Europe. These are rectangular blocks of rubber, dark in color, the size of a cutting board. And on each such block is imprinted the inscription Chipotier. Naturally, enthusiasts wondered how these rubber slabs could have appeared on beaches all over Europe for so many years. And that's what they were able to find out. It turned out that Sipadir is a village in West Java, a province of an island in Indonesia. And at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the area was a thriving plantation. And the plates themselves, made from the frozen milky sap of local trees, were made just there. It would seem that the question of the origin of the plates has been resolved, but a new question has arisen, how to explain that the plates suddenly began to appear on the beaches of Sweden, Germany, Spain, countries in the other hemisphere for 1,000 kilometers from Indonesia. And not only have they been appearing periodically for decades, but they have also appeared a good hundred years after they were cast. Naturally, experts have suggested that the plates wash ashore from a sunken ship that somehow made itself known more than half a century after the wreck. And the most interesting theory is that the plates are artifacts from the legendary Titanic. Allegedly, a cargo of such plates was on the Titanic at the time of the famous wreck. And that's exactly what people have been finding for decades. But why didn't the plates resurface immediately after the wreck and why haven't they been mentioned by Titanic's numerous researchers? And one more question does not give rest to experts. Since the plates are made of a natural product, they should decompose. But very many of them have maintained an unusually good condition, although they should be a good hundred years old. In any case, the mystery of the mysterious plates remains unsolved. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and write what you think about it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Your support is very important to me.